everyone welcome to the third session of downstream processing in session 1 we discussed about the cell disruption methods for intracellular products in session 2 we started with the next step that is solid liquid separation and we discussed filtration in detail now in this session we we'll look for other methods of solid liquid separation which includes centrifugation sedimentation and flocculation now starting with centrifugation although centrifuge may be expensive when compared with a filter but it still may be essential when filtration is slow and difficult the cells or other suspended matter must be obtained free of filtrates continuous separation to a high standard of hygiene is required and it is also useful when ordinary filtration is not separating particles talking about mode of operation the centrifuges used in harvesting fermentation broths are all operated on a continuous or semi continuous basis since non continuous centrifuges are of extremely limited capacity and therefore not suitable for large scale fermentation now let's get a brief idea on theory of centrifugation separation is on the basis of size shape density viscosity of medium and rotor speed with the aid of centrifugal force centrifugal force is the driving force for separation replacing the gravitational force during sedimentation particle size above 5 micrometer sediment at the bottom due to gravitational force here separation is possible by simple filtration only but particles with less size undergo brownian motion that is random movement of particles in a fluid due to their collisions with each other atoms or molecules therefore they do not sediment under gravity and thus centrifugal force is required to separate them centrifugal force causes dense particles to move outwards in radial direction whereas lighter particles move to the center Now for the industrial application different types of centrifuges are available they may differ in their mode of operation capacities speed mode of loading and discharging the ultimate choice of the type of centrifuge depends on the type of application and effectiveness different type of centrifuges are basket centrifuge or perforated bowl basket centrifuge tubular bowl centrifuge solid bowl scroll centrifuge or decanter centrifuge multi chamber centrifuge and disc bowl centrifuge now let's see their working one by one basket centrifuge or perforated bowl basket centrifuge it contains perforated balls with a filter bag of nylon or cotton as you can see in the diagram the perforated basket lined with the backing screen on which filter cloth is placed the liquid that is the slurry is fed in continuous mode from the center and the centrifuge is run at not more than 4000 rpm as you can see when the slurry rotates in the centrifuge the filter cake gets deposited just along the filter cloth and the clear liquid passes out through these perforated holes to the outside The rate of feeding of slurry is 50 to 300 dm3 per minute and have a solid holding capacity of maximum 500 dm3. It is used for the separation of mycelial mass, molds and crystalline compounds. Coming to the second type of centrifuge that is tubular ball centrifuge. The main component of this system is a cylindrical ball which may be of variable design depending on their application. The system remains suspended by a shaft which is flexible and rotates by a motor fitted overhead. The inlet is at the bottom fitted with the nozzle which enters through the bottom bearing. The inlet consists of solid and a liquid phase. The liquid generally contains a light and a heavy phase. The system is applied for the separation of particles having dimensions of 0.1 micrometer to 200 micrometer in diameter and for a liquid having solid load of only 10% or less. Tubular ball centrifuge can be applied for light phase and heavy phase liquid separation. It can also be used for the separation of solids, light phase liquid and heavy phase liquid. Also for the solid and liquid separation The solid particles sediment on the wall of the rotor and the two liquid phases get separated into two distinct zones as you can see in the diagram. 
At the exit, they are kept separated by the adjustable lips of the rings, which may be of various sizes. System can be operated at a speed of 50,000 RPM. Limitations are limited solid holding capacity, laws of efficiency, etc. The third type of centrifuge is a solid ball scroll centrifuge or decanter centrifuge. The main part of the system is a horizontal rotating solid ball. Slurry is fed through the spindle of an Archimedean screw within the ball. Now as the centrifuge rotates, solid is separated on the wall of the bowl and is scrapped up to the conical end of the bowl. The slope of the bowl is so set that the excessive fluid is drained out from the solid. As you can see in the diagram, this is the conical end of the centrifuge where solid is being discharged, whereas the liquid is discharged at the other end of the bowl. The system is used in continuous mode for the separation of solids from the fermentation broth. The bigger version can be applied at a maximum speed of 5000 rpm. Smallest versions can be applied sometimes at a speed of 10,000 rpm. This centrifuge system is available for various applications with the facility of cake washing, with vertical bowl decanting facility, with the facility of in situ cleaning and the facilities for the containment of biohazards. So all these features make it an apt centrifuge that can be used at industrial scale. Next type is the multi-chamber centrifuge. This system consists of multiple chambers mounted within the chamber of the rotor. The slurry is fed into the chamber through a system of spindles and travels through the system of chamber through a circuitous route. As you can see in the diagram, at the outer face of each chamber the solid is collected whereas the clear liquid reaching to the walls of the centrifuge will finally be taken out from the top. This system is applied for the separation of particles having dimensions of 0.1 micrometer to 200 micrometer in diameter. Though the system is having greater solid handling capacity and there is virtually no loss of efficiency, but its mechanical stability limits its larger application and speed maxima till 6500 rpm. Now the last type of centrifuge that we'll be discussing is disc pulse centrifuge. This system consists of a central inlet pipe and a system of conical disc made of stainless steel arranged in stacks with a spacer. The broth to be separated is injected into the system through a central pipe and then it flows outward towards the disc. There it flows upward and inward in between the disc at an angle of 45 degrees with the axis of rotation. Within the closed system, the solid sediments rapidly accumulating on the inner wall of the bowl as you can see in the diagram. The sediment formed can be discharged continuously, whereas the filtrate, also known as centrate, is taken out from another opening at the top. The system is highly efficient, has capacity of high volume liquid handling, easy removal of solid and in situ cleaning facility. Solids can be removed by automatic opening of the solid collection bowl. Feed rate is as high as 1800 dm3 per minute and rotational speed ranges from 5000 rpm to 10000 rpm. Now another method that can be used for solid liquid separation is the easiest one that is sedimentation. It is applicable only for large particles greater than 100 micrometer in diameter. It is a slow process and takes roughly about 3 hours. It is used in process like activated sludge effluent treatment. It's a free settling process which depends only on gravity. Particle settling is a high particle density suspension. After filtration, centrifugation and sedimentation, another method that can be used for solid liquid separation is flocculation. Chemicals that promote flocculation by causing colloids and other suspended particles in liquids to aggregate forming a flock are called flocculating agents. Flocculants are used in water treatment processes to improve the sedimentation. In flocculation, the cells or cell debris form large aggregates to settle down for easy removal. The process of flocculation depends on the nature of cells and the ionic constituents of the medium. Addition of flocculating agents like an organic salt, organic polyelectrolyte, mineral hydrocolloid is often necessary to achieve appropriate flocculation. Now as you can see in the diagram, the individual particles remain suspended within the liquid 
and are unable to settle at the bottom due to gravity. Therefore, with the help of a flocculating agent, it connects different particles and makes them denser, which ultimately settles at the bottom. So by far, we have discussed cell disruption methods and solid liquid separation. Now after these steps are done, the next stage is concentration, which we'll be discussing in our next session. Thank you.